All right, we're going to construct our first uh, tile set. We're going to actually make two of them. We're going to make an above ground tile set and an underground tile set. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to show you how to do that using cutting and uh, pasting pieces of different graphic files so that we can learn how to construct a tile set that way. Um, and also just things to think about when you're creating a, a, a tile set for a background tile versus a tile set for a character or a monster or an object that's going to be on the screen. Okay, so when we go to... He is really talkative over here too right now. It's crazy. I'm going to go to Pixel Editor, and I'm going to open up... Uh, I put some assets in your, in your um, beta assets graphics. I'm going to grab this tree right here. Um, I'm going to unstretch it. And again, it, this is a, uh, it's not conformed to nest constraints, but at least it uses the right number of colors. We've got green, uh, we've got a darker gr or a lighter green, we've got black and we've got brown. Now I'm going to load up my dummy palette. Again, I'm using a dummy palette so that I can see what it would look like on screen without actually messing with one of my real palettes, uh, that in the game, uh, so if you forgot why I set that up, that's why I set that up. The, uh, the, what I'm going to do is I need to change these colors. I can use black though. I don't want to make the background black for a background object because I'm going to use black to sort of be the outline color. Um, it's kind of a trick. Black really means transparent. It's the transparent color for a sprite. That means if a sprite was over the top of this, you wouldn't see black, but for a background, it means that's the color that's in back of everything. So I can you still use it as a color. So I'm going to keep black and I'm going to use that for my outline. Um, of course, this doesn't conform. They're all bad pixels right now. If I click on bad pixels there, none of them conform, even though it's green, it's not the right value green for this. Um, generally how I work and I, there's no reason for this at all. It's just how I got used to doing things is that, uh, I want my, uh, my ground to be my last color. So on my tile set, I'm going to go ahead and construct this. I want grass to be like this color green. And I also need a lighter color green. And I usually go ground color, highlight color, shadow color of each sub palette. So ground color, highlight color would be, I guess, like a really light green color like this. Um, and then shadow color, I'm gonna have to use brown. Um, it's almost gonna look like it's a snowing tree. So I might have to play with which colors I wanted to use. But uh, check this out. This is this is nice and easy to do. I'm going to select my ground color and global color change. And it just changed all that. Now, if I look, it made it blue. It made it the last color, which means it's translating it through whatever's in here. All right, so it looks like that. Um, now I'm gonna get my light, my, my highlight color and click on the highlights and that's gonna make it red, right? Exactly. So now if I look at bad pixels, the only bad pixels left are these brown pixels. So I need to get the brown color and call that brown. And that made it the one, two, three color that made it black, red, green, technically. So if I look at it in RGB, this is what the, the tile actually looks like now. This is what the, the graphic actually looks like now. Um, that's how the NES is going to read the values. This is what it's going to look like if it's translated through this palette. And I could play with this a little bit. Maybe I'll make the grass a little bit darker and then the tree won't look quite as awkward. Like this could be a forest tree or something like that. Yeah, I actually like that. So we're going to stick to this color for the ground color. Um, and I can always change that. I can update that. I can make this a, a snow covered tree if I wanted to, um, just by doing that, you know, or a uh, fire tree. I don't know, whatever I could, I could play with, uh, all kinds of things to sort of give it uh, a unique look. Um, but I'm gonna stick with that for now. Okay. So I've got a tree. Uh, I'm going to copy this tree out. Don't forget. This is what it actually looks like. I'm going to copy this tree out by using the select region. I'm going to copy. Control C. I'm going to pixel editor, editor, new BMP, and I'm going to make a new main tile set. Um, I'm going to make sure it's stretched right. I believe it is. I'm going to go to the top left corner and Control V. Now I'm not going to go to the top left corner. I was going to do that, but I'm going to leave a space. I'm going to go to the second tile over because I'm going to put my actual default ground tile on this tile right here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because when I make a new screen, that's the tile that's going to be drawn in by default. And I, it, I, I could go through and change all the tiles to the ground, 
uh, but they'll all show if I had pasted it right here, it would show up as the top left corner of this tree by default, and then I'd have to change them all. Instead, it's probably smarter to just set them all to the ground tile first. Um, so I'm going to use, I'm going to get that color, which was this. And I'm going to tile fill. Instead of global change, I'm going to tile fill. And it's going to tile, it's going to fill in just by tile everything that's that color. So now I have a ground tile. And generally speaking, um, blank ground tiles like this are super boring. So I might want to get like black and just kind of put a couple dots in there. Um, and I could, I can edit this later to, to make something that doesn't look so, uh, it doesn't look so uniform or I could, if I want to waste the graphic space, I could use, you know, instead of a, a two by two, I could use like a four by four area and then it would look even less like a pattern. Um, okay. So, the, I, I also want to pull in a, another another uh, asset over here. I got I have a mushroom that I want to pull into into this tile set. The problem is I can't. Uh, I, I need to save this first, then open that one and paste that one into this one. So I'm going to save this over the top. I'm going to save it. Nest maker, um, graphic assets. This is going to be my background character zero zero. This is my first tile set. I'm going to save it. And yep, I want to replace it. Yep, and reloading it. Okay, I'm going to lose this for a second, and I'm going to go to my mushroom, which is in uh, beta assets, graphics, and it's in tiles right here. I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to stretch that. So I've got this mushroom here that I'm going to use, and it was supposed to be in a swamp, so I'm going to edit it a little bit. Um, first of all, though, uh, I'm going to conform this. I'm going to disregard the rest of this. Uh, so I'm just going to pretend like I'm not even looking at this stuff. I'm not going to resave this back over the top of that file. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to, uh, I have to conform this. First and foremost, I have to conform this. So I'm going to get my global color change tool and I want the ground to be ground. Right. And in fact, I'm going to use my pencil tool to get rid of the sort of swamp detail that's around it because it's going to be in the grassland now. And I don't really want that extra swamp detail. So I'm just coloring in that color. So what actually just happened is it put it, it made it blue to match to, to go through this. So anything that's blue is going to go through whatever color is here. So if I change the ground color in the game, it's going to update it to whatever I change this to in the game. Um, now I have a mushroom and I'll use this second uh, sub palette as, again, just as reference, um, just so we can make this look more like a mushroom. And I'm going to make this the same color so that um, it's still blue. It's going, and I'm using this sub palette. So it's going through that, that color right there. Uh, but I'm going to make this look more like a mushroom, maybe those two colors, this light and this purple. And so highlight shadow, I'm going to use the highlight for the white. And I'm going to use the shadow for the shadow. And really what it just did was it made that out of my mushroom. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to copy that out. I'm not going to save this at all because I don't want to keep this. I'm going to open up. I'm going to go to game engine data. Now I'm going to go... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to graphic assets. Sorry. I'm going to go to background character zero, zero, and I'm going to unstretch that. And now I'm going to put this in this first empty spot. I'm going to put my mouse in the top left corner. And now I've got a mushroom included in this tile set. So now I've got ground tile and a tree and a mushroom. And you can see how I've built a tile set uh, out of uh, you know, stray tiles from different tiles and I've conformed them all. And now, uh, this tree will could use the first loaded tile set or palette set. So this would be brown and light green and the ground would be ground color. And this one can use this sub palette. So I'd get a green and a sort of mushroom color and a sort of poison color. Right. And lastly, uh, I'm going to edit all of these with a pencil tool just to sort of conform this um, look. So the grass looks like it's continuous like that. Um, and I just, that was just me putting in random dots. So if you want to see what it looks like through this palette, uh, this, this tile set or this palette set, I should say the tree would look like that. And the mushrooms would look like that. And you can see how the ground stays the same color because the, it's the same, 
it's the same color in both sub palettes. It's one of the drawbacks about not having perfectly square assets is that you're going to lose some colors if you want it to look seamless. But uh, we've noticed that you can get a lot. You can actually get a lot of uh, a, a lot of leg out of out of that if you just keep like the ground color uh, over at least two palettes. All right, so that's how I can uh, create multiple. Um, I can create a single tile set out of multiple uh, tiles that I pull in from other sources. I'm going to make uh, just one more. I'm going to save that. I'm just going to save it. I'm basically, I'm sa I'll am save it as. I'm saving it over the top of that. Yep. Because it's just that appended. Okay. Uh, lastly, I'm going to make a new... Uh, well, let me open. Let's see. I'm going to go to beta assets, graphics. Um, I want to pull in the brick wall and the skull from here. Um, so I'm going to pull in the brick wall and the skull. I'm going to copy the, uh, I'm going to actually, I'll conform them while I'm here. Ground color. I still want to be a ground color. Now, maybe I'm using totally, so since this is a dummy palette, I can change this. So what would the ground color be like in my dungeon? Uh, it's easy to say brown, but brown kind of disappears. You might want brown for your bricks and things like that. I like to use like the purples or the blues. Uh, look, they look really cool. Um, disregard what this is doing to the mushroom. Just look at these two tiles right here. Uh, and I'm going to want for the skull, definitely a highlight and a shadow. And for the brick wall, I'm going to want like that same color purple. And I'm going to want two shades here for the bricks. So maybe they're red bricks and I could go like brick, brick, or maybe they're stone or maybe they're gold, you know, and I could do this. We'll take a look at which one looks best. Let's go gold right now. Cause that's going to really pop against this purple ground. Um, and we can always change actually, gray wood too but we'll we'll change that in a second um so let's conform these let's conform these so that uh it's seeing red green blue which it's not ne neither of these are uh i'm going to get the global color change tool and i'm going to make the ground color blue this this third value okay this didn't have any ground color so it didn't change next i want to make the highlight colors for both of these green so i'm going to get the highlight color which uh highlight shadow that's how i do it so uh transparent color background highlight shadow ground you don't have to do it that way you develop your own system that's the way i do it it makes it easy for me to see and sort of stay uh, consistent across graphics so my highlight color the highlight of the skull is this the highlight of the now this is going to be problematic because it's going to change both of these so um, let me do this by tile instead i'm going to use the tile fill tool and i'm going to fill this in tile by tile that way i didn't affect this over here so now i've got ground color highlight shadow and over here uh, i'm going to go highlight which would be this and then shadow which would be that so the skull is going to end up looking like that. And this actually, that actually doesn't look too bad for brick wall. But if I wanted gold, the brick wall would look like that. And that doesn't necessarily look that bad for the skull either. So I might be able to get away with just using one sub palette. Um, and I'm going to copy these out. Control C. I'm going to make a new main tile set. And again, I'm going to not use the first... I'm not going to use this first uh, tile. I'm going to paste it in here. And the reason is, again, I'm going to make a ground tile right here. So I'm going to use the, um, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to use the ground color. And I'm going to use the tile fill. And that's going to give me whatever tile is going to replace that color within that tile. And again, just like above, I'm going to get the color black. And just put a couple of dots in there to show that it's ground. I could also make this like a cool um, uh, like tile like in Zelda or something like that. Um, but for right now, this is good. I'm going to save it. And instead of overwriting the tile that or the tile set that I just made, I'm going to use background CHR01. 
So I'll save it over top of that one. So now I'll have an overworld tile set and an underground tile set. Save it. Yes. And yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now in, next, uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to start to look at how to build assets and construct screens using them.